This is Dr. Nick Begich. He wrote the book, Angels Don't Play This Harp. There's a couple of other applications of harp that I want to talk a little bit about. Um, the first one, and these are the two most, probably the most controversial um, areas of harp. The first one deals with the idea of manipulating weather systems. And this is a very important issue because, again, you're dealing with concepts that have been attempted over the years. In fact, these days you've actually got the United States Congress, um, two bills pending, one in the Senate, one in the House, to create a commission uh, for review of weather modification technology because commercial interests are now advancing them along with um, other militaries from around the world. So you've got economic interest interested as much as the military in controlling weather outcomes and climate outcomes for obvious uh, advantage and reasons. Um, but it creates problems. And here's what happens with HARP. HARP is also capable of, in fact, the early versions were called ionospheric heaters because they literally would heat the ionosphere. And when you think of this area being heated, it's about 30 miles in diameter above the uh, facility itself. And when you heat the area up by, by affecting uh, this region, you literally push it up. So it goes up and out into space, perhaps as far as 200 kilometers. Instead of being 30 uh, miles above the Earth's surface, now you're almost a couple hundred miles, potentially, out into space with this column. And the lower atmosphere below rushes in to fill that space. Now, what happens then? If you take it a little bit further and you start to look at this whole concept of using a system on the ground to aggravate um, the ionosphere. Now what else happens when that lower atmosphere rushes in? You also change uh, pressure systems in the immediate region in terms of, of lows and highs and the way those pressure systems work and the way in which jet streams flow by altering the flow of jet streams, by altering uh, the way the atmosphere is located within an area, that's where you can get these huge, uh, huge problems. Once again, just so you understand the concept, the ionosphere is raised from heating it up, which creates a vacuum underneath. The surrounding air then sweeps in to fill that vacuum, and we're talking about great amounts of air, huge masses. This is how weather is manipulated. The patents with the W's are the ones that actually have weather manipulation listed as one of their claims. The patent that Dutch is looking at was not part of the original three, but it is an upgrade to the original idea of creating a mirror in the ionosphere, only this guy does it in the atmosphere. Where Bernard Eastland created his mirror in the ionosphere, Peter Cohort creates his in the atmosphere. Remember when he couldn't find the description of number 22 on his diagram? Well, let's let him explain it. Ah, okay, it is. It's in the first patent still. Great. Okay, see this here? See this square and how it's being projected down from 22? Let's see if they have 22 labeled on here. They don't have 22 labeled on here. So there is pages missing, of course. They're probably classified. Missing pages? What's he talking about? From the original document. up here. This is a point of reflection down here. Okay? And look what it projects down into. A square. Here's the wavy clouds up above. This, this represents the different waves in the clouds, the harp cloud. Figure 7 illustrates creation of an inclined aim. The heater array, 40, is first focused at point 41. 
the heater array scans along the X direction to point 42 to generate avalanche ionization along line 43. Next, as in creation of a non-inclined aim, the heater array scans along the X and Y directions directly below point 44. The heater array 40 alters each phase or frequency to refocus to a higher altitude in the Z direction to the point 44. The heater array then scans along the x-axis to point 45 to create the avalanche ionization line 46. The heater array continues this process to create a tilted ionization plane or tilted aim layer. As you'll recall in the summary, he described it as painting a plasma layer. You're up here. This is a point of reflection down here. Okay? And look what it projects down into, a square. Here's the wavy clouds up above. This, this represents the different waves in the clouds, the harp cloud. That is actually the A mirror, not harp cloud. And look what it does. They reflect it down in a tiltable mirror, and it comes down to the ground in a square fashion. They show it here multiple points, like a staircase or a sawtooth pattern, and then multiple squares down below. X, Y, Z axis, of course axis and you you can see it it's right here in a diagram And he tells us we should read it all? He should read it. Can you say hypocrite? This invention relates to generation of an artificial ionospheric mirror, an AIM, or a plasma layer in the atmosphere. Now, just stop right there. A plasma layer in the atmosphere. Okay, and uh, there is no plasma layer in the atmosphere. It has to be created. And the way you create a plasma field in the atmosphere is through spraying of certain particles up in the atmosphere that aid in frequency manipulation to cause a layer of plasma. And that's the, the wave. See these waves here? That's the wavy harp cloud that we all see from time to time. And they call it harp clouds now because they form in a wave. Then what they do is through a series of ground-based systems, harp, this would be harp right here, the grid, It projects up into the atmosphere and it projects down to this is the tilted mirror so they create this with spraying they're able to create a tiltable mirror depending on which way they they manipulate it with frequency to reflect down to a house or to another dish that reflects higher up into the cloud itself back down to planes which are flying beneath okay Figure 1 illustrates the creation and use of an artificial ionospheric mirror, an AIM, for tracking aircraft and reflecting radio waves. A heater antenna, 1, radiates power causing avalanche ionization or breakdown, releasing free electrons in the atmosphere to generate the AIM, number 2. The heater antenna, 1, 
is an array which can be used to focus energy at varying altitudes and elevations to tilt the aim to using phase and frequency control. The aim to simulates the ionosphere number three which is also used to detect over the horizon targets. Those are designated number five. In addition the AIM-2 can reflect radio signals transmitted from a transmitter, number 6, to a receiver, number 7, over long distances. Now, can this embodiment be used to affect the weather? Yes. The high frequency beam can be aimed at the mirror and then reflected up and go through the whole cascading of the ionization, which means pushing up the atmosphere to allow the surrounding air to sweep in. Yeah, it can do that, but it's not going to aim down, it's not going to affect any radar units, you're not going to see it. I'm sorry, but you're not. Look, I know that you want weather control to be more technical than just raising the atmosphere up and allowing the surrounding air to move in to take its place. It, I know you want that. You want beams, you want James Bond stuff, you know, you want Star Trek, you want science fiction. But it's not, and no matter how much you try to push it, it's not going to be. The truth is the truth. Now I know this is going to disappoint a lot of you. Like when you learned Santa Claus wasn't real. That kind of disappointment. I realize that. But you have to face the fact that Dutch Sense fabricates the truth out of diagrams. He does not read what it actually does in the patent. You can go and read it and discover for yourself. It's really easy reading. It's not that tough. And there will be the diehards who will defend Dutch Sense's views till the, their dying breath, even though it's a lie, and they are perpetuating the lie, which doesn't do all the rest of the truthers any good. You're confusing the issue. We want everybody to know about HARP, but the real HARP, not the imaginary scalar squares, radar rings, and whatever else a very active imagination can think up. If you support him, you should support his good works. He does have good works. He does some phenomenal things with the earthquakes and, and, and with the weather, minus the harp rings, of course. Um, and when he starts talking these rings and squares, you should tell him in his comments, hey, that's enough of that. It's already been proven wrong. Get off of that. Get back to the basics. Get back to what he always did good. That was why I subscribed to him in the first place. You have to understand that you cannot make your work credible by fabricating the truth. It doesn't work that way. Scalar squares are another fabrication of an imagination. He coined that term. You'll never find it anywhere. No one said it. Tom Bearden never said scalar squares. He said scalar waves. And they were theoretical, actually, until he did it on a bench. The way he got that term was a brainstorming session that he had with Ginny, that scientific advisor girl that he was working with, her in Patriot, Patriot Space, she had mentioned that Tom Bearden was using square waves when they generated a detector for scalar, wave, scalar waves. A square wave is just a metering wave. Um, now they use sine waves. Square waves are archaic. The digital world they use sine waves. But he latched onto that term square and scalar and he married the two and coined the term scalar squares. It's a fabrication. There's no such thing. And this is the final demise. There's no way he can justify the abuse of your intellect. I mean, you're smarter than that. You know that if somebody's making something up, it's not true. What else is he making up? All those documents he put out there were meant as a distraction. He knew no one would check him on his work because no one wants to read through all those things. I happen to love reading technical stuff, so I started divulging into it, and that's when I unsubscribed from him. That's when I knew he was not telling us the truth, and now you know. What are you going to do about it?